Good morning. I'm Ed Wilson, the Microsoft Scripting Guy. And today I want to talk a little bit about using constructors with Windows PowerShell classes. So what's a constructor? Well, whenever I want to create a new instance of a PowerShell class, then I use a constructor. Now you might say, well, wait a second, we didn't have any constructors uh, earlier when we were creating instances of classes. And that's true, sort of. Why do I say sort of? Well, the reason I say sort of is because that what we were really doing was just using a default constructor. So we create the class, and if there's not anything there, then we were just kind of coming in with the defaults, and we would create the class, and everything's groovy. So what happens now? Well, if I want to create a constructor, so that means that when I create an instance of a class, I need to do it in a specific way. Well, so when I do that, then what I do is I specify how I want to create the class. Now, the trick here is that I use the same word for my method. See, this is a method. See, we got the parentheses there and we got our script block. And notice it says car. This is the same name as the class. When I create a method that is exactly the same name as the class, then, uh, then Windows PowerShell recognizes that this is a constructor for this class. So what, what happens? Well, I run this. So now I've loaded it. And now I come over here and I say um, car. And I go colon, colon. And then new. And then notice that my IntelliSense comes over here, and so my new method now, I have to give it a string that will be my VIN, my vehicle identification number. So notice that um, for my method, string, VIN, and then this, which means this object here, this dot VIN is now equal to whatever I supply. So I go new. And if I don't put anything in there, then it comes back and it says we cannot find an overload for new and the argument count of zero. And this is something that we've probably seen before if we've been doing very much with Windows PowerShell. We've seen where it says, hey, I can't find an argument, um, an overload for an argument of zero or one or two or three or whatever it is that we're coming in with. But now if I type in my um, VIN number, then we come over here and now it creates the instance of the class and notice that we have now populated um, the vehicle identification number of our class. So this is, this is what happens then. So if we've got something that we want to be mandatory, if you will, or something that has to be done when I create an instance of this class, then I put this in my constructor so that when I create or construct an instance of the class, this is produced. This is the value that is accepted, and this is what comes about. So what's an overloaded constructor? Well, an overloaded constructor is one that says, hey, you know, there is more than one way of doing this thing. You know, we always hear this in IT. Well, you know, there's more than one way of doing such and such. Well, what do I mean here with my class? Well, if I supply a VIN, then, uh, or uh, in my first position, then I want this to be used for my vehicle identification number. If I supply a second value, then in the second position, this is going to be the model. If I supply a third position, that's going to be the year. And so notice that I'm just simply populating these values on this object. See, I know it's this object because it says this right there. So then model. VIN model year, VIN model year number of doors. And so this is my class definition. And then notice that my overrides here is essentially it's the same method but defined four different ways, uh, each of which is in four different values. So when I run uh, run this class, then I come over here and now I come back and I say new one, two, three, four. Well, hey, you know, that's my first overload. This is the way that we reference it. This is my first overload. This is the first way that I can do this. Or I can come back here, uh, and if I come, uh, come back and look at it like this. So whenever I call a method and I do not supply any parentheses or anything, then we get the definition of the overloads. So these are my overload definitions. New, 
van, new, van model, new, van model year, new, van model year, number of doors. So let me go ahead and uh, do this. So now the next thing that I want is, so uh, one, this is my, mo uh, my vehicle identification number. Second overload is a model, and let's just say Chevy. And it says it's a string. So if I uh, convert it there, well then now it, it whines. Well, why does it whine now? Well, um, because uh, unexpected token Chevy in the expression or the statement. And um, so the model was listed as a string, but it's not parsed as a string now, is it? So I come back over here and put this in quotes. And then now we come back here, we got our VIN and we got our model. Well, what was the other load? Uh, the year. So this time I'm going to uh, populate my year. And I know that if I do something like... Uh, like that, then PowerShell is smart enough to be able to cast this string into a date time object, and that's what we have up here. So when I press enter, then now we come back, this is my year, and then we also come up with our date. And I talked about this uh, earlier uh, when I was discussing this. And then the other overload is uh, when we come back up here, uh, an integer for the number of doors. And so this means that if I put in like three, then now we come back, we got three doors, Chevy, with this VIN this year, and all of this. So these are the overloads. Uh, by introducing overloads, which is actually really easy to do, I'll be honest, this was a lot of cut and paste uh, because I wanted to keep things consistent. And... Um, but this just makes it a lot more powerful. Notice, you know, that we wind up with some error checking here. You know, that it makes sure that, hey, you know, is this the right kind of a thing that we were looking at? And if we had uh, used enumerations uh, for these values, um, like I talked uh, about um, earlier, then um, we could just make sure that we had exactly the right model, uh, the right year, and all of that stuff. So I'm Ed Wilson, the Microsoft Scripting Guys, and this is using overload constructors in Windows PowerShell 5 classes. Thank you, and I hope you have an awesome weekend.